Hey, this is Jeff, and you're watching Jeru Camping Adventures. Today, I'm going to show you how we set up our internet, which gives us the freedom to travel and do work and school on the road. Come on, let's check it out. Come on, guys, let's get this pole out. I'll show you where I hook it. Come on. For this one, the Connect 65 RV, you get a connection point here. This is 3M adhesive, and they give you a second one. They recommend to place them about four feet apart. And you'll notice on the pole, there's a connection point here, and then another one. And this one will slide up and down depending on your height. The WeBoost kit comes with coaxial cables and a whole bunch of other things. What we're going to do is plug one of them into the port. I've taken the time on my RV to actually trace these out. And I like these coaxial caps. If you come, come zoom in a little bit, these are pretty cool and they're much better than those rubbery things that are on the outside that get all yucky. So I'll leave a link in the description for these, but take this off and then that way you can plug your coaxial cable that the kit comes with. Okay, this one's about 30 feet long. They give you another extension and then a female to female coupler and you can connect two of them together and there's also a window unit or a really thin one and you can plug that into doors. I don't need to do that because I'm gonna plug straight in. Okay, let's, let's uh, connect this cable to the trailer. Make sure that's tight and then let's bring this down and we'll plug into the antenna. All right, let's stand this up. You're gonna use those connection points from before but what you wanna do is extend each one first, start from the top and then work your way down. Then tighten each one so it doesn't slip down. Then go to the next one. And then tighten it. Lock it in place. Put this one in. And now they're in. And now you can just keep raising this up. And depending on where your towers are, you point that way. Once you lock this in place, it keeps this from twisting. So that's it. That's the pole. Okay guys, let's talk about this telescoping pole that comes with the package. There's five sections, one, two, three, four. And if you notice on mine, mine is not extended. If you have trees or other things in the way, you can raise it or lower it. I keep mine only at position four because in windy conditions, this pole wobbles quite a bit. So keep that in mind when you set yours up. Here inside the trailer, I mount all my stuff behind my TV. I have this diagonal mount that came with the trailer. So I put my pep link here and I mount the WeBoost here with its internal antenna there. And up above, I mentioned before those utility ports, satellite and cable. Here is a high level diagram of our internet setup. You have the outdoor antenna, which connects to the cellular towers. From there, it sends the signal down to the coaxial cable into the WeBoost Connect RV65 unit. This is doing some bits and bytes crunching and sending that cellular signal into the indoor antenna. From there, the indoor antenna acts as a mini tower to the different cellular devices. In our case, we concentrate everything into the PEP wave, which is running a SIM card for visible, but you can put your other cell providers in there. The next phase is that all the devices like laptops and iPhones or Androids or any of your tablets can connect to one Wi-Fi SSID, so that signal that you put in the name, we only have to remember one no matter where we go, so that's a benefit. From there, of course, we get out to the internet and everybody is happy. Hey guys, so this is a pretty good shot. This is the WeBoost pole. I get a lot of questions when people come up to our trailer. They ask what it is. I try to tell them it's for cellular technology, but they're clueless. They don't get it. <laughs> I skip forward a few days because I think it's important to show you guys some of the analytics and stats that you get out of this setup. So let's get into it. I'll show you the current activity, which is pretty much live right now. We had some Netflix streaming, and at the bottom, you can see the dashboard reports just over two megabits per second. You can see some top talkers on the screen, and sure enough, the TV, which is streaming Netflix, is about 1.5 megabit. You can look at application sessions. Over here, I tested a PDF file download. And remember, I have the visible plan. It caps out at about five megabits per second, so you can see I have 4.7 megabits. Uh, I tested a file upload. Sure enough, 
right around the same cap, just under five megs. And if you notice, the Vizio TV is still streaming Netflix without an issue. We'll move forward to our stay at Karchner Caverns. And you can see from September 1st through the 6th, we averaged about five gigs. And one of the day, we actually hit about 10 gigabyte total. You get the same stats on the daily usage table, broken down into days. And uh, I keep talking about Visible, which is Verizon, but I also have AT&T. I think it's important to have multiple service providers. Uh, our backup provider is our phone. So if we need to, we'll tether on our phone. And you could see that when we have the WeBoost on, we can access the same technology that the Peplink can and boost our signal. So we're pulling about 23 meg down and about 14 meg up. We can look at a two month overall trip. We did a summer trip and you can see in the bottom right, we went all over the Northwest coast. It's really important to have multiple service providers in this kind of trip because you don't know where you're gonna be. Up in the Northwest, Verizon was not that reliable. So same thing, we get monthly usage stats. You can see one of the months we almost hit about 90 gig, close to 100. Moving over to the table, you can break it down by month and you can see per month what your stats are. Now, this is important for configuration. I wanna move into the Peplink settings at a high level. I'm not gonna walk through the GUI. These are just screenshots again. But if you wanna set up your visible card, you gotta make sure that you are running generic network mode and you need firmware 8.1 on your Peplink or higher. When you get into the cellular settings, your APN is VSBL internet and the operator setting is custom. If you have a different SIM card or say Verizon or an AT&T plan, you can just put that in the second slot and choose auto and it automatically finds your provider and picks up the cell settings that you need. The health checks, I keep mine on smart check. Wi-Fi radio settings, I set mine up so that way I can offer 2G and then output power is max boost. I saw some of these settings on some forums, so I'll leave those links so you guys can follow up on the same forums. Wi-Fi security, you don't wanna offer free Wi-Fi, so make sure you put on a security encryption key, make sure your policy is WPA2 or higher, and I also do a Mac allow block list uh, that allows um, only your restricted clients to the network. You can, of course, limit everybody in terms of a total bandwidth control. I do this because my visible plan is five meg, so if anyone's going over four, we still have at least one, and that's good enough for team calls and Zoom calls. And of course, you can set up applications in terms of priority. So again, I keep saying uh, Microsoft Teams, that's where I do most of my work, and also the school for the kids. And then Zoom is also uh, virtual video and team calls. So those are set to high and everything else is set to low. So in case anyone's streaming, there's no video or application issues. So let's get back to the actual setup and I'll show you guys how to find some towers. Okay guys, I got everything set up. We need to find the towers that are most suitable to our location. We want line of sight, we don't want hills in the way. Uh, I should mention that this WeBoost antenna that came with the kit is unidirectional. Some of the kits, and optionally, you can also buy an omnidirectional antenna, and then that way you don't really have to find antennas. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have close by antennas, you need that unidirectional line of sight. So I'll hop on Google Maps here and I'll show you how I do that. First, I already have this bookmark saved where we're staying right now, Karchner Cabins State Park. But if you didn't know where you were, you can hit this little finder button and it'll zoom in and find you. If you don't have service, hopefully you already did this before you left your previous site where you did have reliable service. That way you can find what's going on. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and you haven't found that tower yet, this part's gonna be a little tough. To help me find myself at this location, I'm gonna turn on satellite view and I know for sure that I'm right about in this location. So if we highlight that, we get our GPS location perfect. All right, let's move on to the next step. We grab those GPS locations, click it, it'll copy to your clipboard. And now I'm gonna hop over to a site from scadacore.com. I'll leave the link in the description, but when you load the site, you'll get this pop-up, close it. Down below, you'll see a map and you can actually enter your latitude and longitude. Do a search page loads, go ahead and zoom in. 
And once you get close enough, you're gonna see some towers in your location. And the goal here is that you wanna find a tower that is clear line of sight. You don't want mountains in the way and it's gonna be very visible when you click on one. So let's use Tombstone as an example. Pointing southeast, you can see there's nothing in the way. It tells you the distance from the original location as well. I cheated, so I kind of did this last night to find some locations. If we click on this tower, I'm pointing this location, this direction, and you can notice clear line of sight as well. At first, I pointed directly south, and there was a mountain in the way, so my service was not that great. So the goal is to find different towers around your map, find the best one with a line of sight. That's step one. Step two is to actually go twist that WeBoost pole in different directions and do your speed test. We'll go ahead and do that next. Uh, before I get up and leave, I forgot to tell you about another site I use. I put this one in the description as well, cellmapper.net. So if we load this, I'll do a refresh so you can see the whole page load. It may ask you for uh, your location preferences in your browser. So go ahead and hit accept so it can find your GPS location. And then what you wanna do is search this list for your provider. And what ends up happening is that different towers that people have reported will pop up. But this site's kind of cool because it shows you the band. So notice band 13, band 13. That'll be important when we're testing the pep link. I'll show you how I can disable band 13 or five or other bands that are not doing that great in order to give us the best connection. So here comes the next step. We're gonna twist this pole around on the utility side. Super easy to do. Unclamp, clamp, clamp, lock it in. You can twist it around and then you can point in the direction you need. So let's get this pointed south. Currently, it's pointed the wrong direction. So we twist, we lock it, and now we're good. The pole is pointing south. Let's go test. All right, I'm back with you guys. Before we start testing, I wanna show you some of the peplink screen because there's some cell tower and signal readings on there that are pretty important. So that way you can have a baseline before and then a baseline after. So let's show you what it looks like. Over here in the dashboard on the peplink device, let's go ahead and look at the cellular connection method, which right now is showing four bars out of five and connected to visible. When you hit details, you can see the various information about the SIM cards and other service provider information. What we're gonna focus on is the LTE band that was selected and also this RSRP number, which when it's in the negative 90 to a negative 100 number, it's a pretty bad connection. You have options down below to put other SIM cards in and adjust those settings with the APN name. For visible, you want VSBL internet. And then down below, you can set some other things like health checks. Let's go ahead and speed test without the WeBoost in use right now. And keep in mind, our cell signal is pretty bad, especially with that RSRP number. Let's open speedtest.net. And you'll notice that it tries to load and you'll get your service provider selected. And then it's also gonna find an optimal server. You can hit go right now, but the test won't start until it actually connects to a server. If your internet connection's pretty bad, this page may not even do anything for you. So go ahead and hit refresh a couple times until it loads. I'll be back so I can show you this after the page loads successfully. All right, after multiple attempts, I finally got the page to load with a preferred server. So let's go ahead and hit go and we'll start the test. The first thing it does is try to do a ping rate and then a download and then an upload. So let's watch these stats and we'll be right back. Oh my gosh, 0 0.04 megabits per second. That's pretty terrible. Guys, this would explain why the page was not loading before. Let's see what upload speed does. Okay, I think if you had to rely on this internet, you would not be working or doing school on the road. Guys, that was pretty bad. We're gonna go in and turn the WeBoost on and it's gonna rock. Now, keep in mind, Visible has a data cap, data rate limit of five megabit per second upload and download. So don't be wowed by the speeds, but notice before we didn't get anything, I should get a consistent five meg up and five meg down now. So let's go turn that thing on. Here we go. Plug it in, you can see the lights. Let's go back outside and test. 
Looking at the dashboard for Peplink, you can instantly see that we have five bars now instead of the four. Sometimes I mentioned I had three, but let's look at details and you'll notice right away that that RSRP number is in a much better range. Notice now it's negative 49, that is awesome. So let's hop over to speed test again and then we will perform another test. Before we switch over to the speed test site, notice the band 13. We're still picking up band 13. That's important later. As I hinted, I already tested this the other night, so I already know the results, but I'm gonna show you guys what I found when I tested band 13 in this area. So let's open speed test. We are on WeBoost right now. WeBoost is plugged in. Our RSRP number is much better. It's in the negative 49 range. Speed test should load much faster, but that also depends on the frequency band, congestion of the network tower, and who else is using it. The preferred server has now been chosen, so let's hit go and test. Keep in mind, this was band 13 with the WeBoost turned on. I showed you guys earlier on cellmapper.net, there was some cell towers with certain bands listed. So that's pretty important when you have a Peplink device or another device that you can deselect certain bands because if you're in a congested area and there's competition from other users, you may wanna deselect bands and go with another one. And I can show you that here in a second because our speed test is still pretty bad. We'll wait for the upload to finish. Okay, you may be wondering, Jeff, does a WeBoost really help? Well, in this case, no, because you're picking a band that everyone else is on. Looking back at the Peplink dashboard, let's connect to the cell details, scroll down, you'll see band selection, you can hit custom, and then uncheck band 13, or uncheck other bands that you're connecting to that are not working as well. Go way to the bottom, hit save, and apply. This will reset the cell modem, and it will search towers again, and then connect to the remaining frequency bands that you have selected in the screen. Hit refresh on the screen, and you should see the cell signal start to reset here in a sec. There we go, we are connected to Verizon Wireless. Remember that I have the visible plan and it rides on top of Verizon's network. We should see a different band other than band 13. And notice we have band five, and we still have some pretty good RSRP number. Let's head back over to speed test and we'll do another test on band five. Okay, I'm excited because again, I cheated. I did this the other night, so I know what the results are gonna be. I have a visible.com mobile plan and it rides on the Verizon network, but visible does a data rate limit of five meg per second up and down load speeds. So when I test this, we should cap out at five each time, but that's gonna be way better than what we got before. Here we go. Now that we have band five selected, let's head over to speed test. Verizon's our service provider. Notice the optimum server loaded much quicker. Now when we hit go, we're gonna do a ping test, a download test, and then an upload test. And the results should be much better than before. Sometimes what you see in these speed tests is some bursting, and depending on the cell tower and your data plan and the current level of subscribers or users and their devices, there may be or more or less congestion. So you could get speeds higher than what Visible actually gives you. In my case, there's a five meg rate limit, upload and download, and you saw that I burst it above that, but pretty much I'm happy with these speeds. I can go work and I can do school now. Hey guys, that was pretty cool, huh? What do you think? Are you still asking yourself, hey Jeff, is that WeBoost really worth it? Well, in my case, yes. I have the power of WeBoost, Peplink, and my visible mobile plan. And together, I can go anywhere I want with the family. We can work and do school on the road. If you like this video and you want to see more, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Make sure you put comments in there, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.